Right, so we've got some Christmas lights on the bench today. So it's all gone a bit big Clive in the lab. And these Christmas lights were gonna get thrown out. Um, they're the old uh, incandescent style lamps, so 20 in series all powered off the mains. Uh, but Camden did quite like these. So what I thought we'd do is modify these with some LEDs. So I was rubbaging through my collection when I was sorting through the lab. Um, and I found these color changing RGB LEDs. So these just need uh, a roughly current limited sort of 20 milliamp supply um, to give these roughly in the range of 3.2 to 3.6 volts. It says on the label. Um, so I thought what we do is we'd um, pull out all of the uh, lamps. So these should just push in uh, and we should be able to take out the incandescent part of the lamp uh, and then put an LED in its place. And then what we'll have to do is make a little uh, LED driver uh, to go on the input side of this from the mains. So one of the things about these Christmas light sets is they are just a series string of incandescent lamps. So each lamp is rated at 12 volts um, and 12 times 20 is about 240 volts. So these will happily run off a 240 volt main supply. But um, if one of these lamps was to get broken, instead of seeing 12 volts potential difference across the um, terminals, you would actually see a full 240 volts because this series string has become open circuit. Um, and because of Ohm's law, uh, because there's no current flowing, uh, you get no voltage drop. So you do see a full 240 volts across the terminals of the lamp. So these are quite fragile and with Camden running around and potentially uh, breaking one of these, I'm hoping by changing these lamps to uh, the LEDs, they'll be a little bit more robust. Uh, plus we'll have our um, LED driver uh, just to make things very slightly safer. So I'm sure many of you are familiar with these Christmas light sets. Um, we should just be able to unfold these wire leads from the, from the lamp. Um, and then if I grab one of these LEDs, we should be able to insert the leads into the holes at the bottom. And then once I've trimmed the legs to the right length, should be able to just fold them over and push them into the lamp holder. So I'll do all of those now. Okay, so that's those done. Um, what I've also done is just marked the cathode on each of these so that they go in the light string the correct way. Uh, and I've also quickly marked up all of the lamp holders as well in the same way. So there's a black mark um, in each of the lamp holders. I think what I'm going to do now is just quickly uh, whiz off the tip of the LED with the Dremel. Uh, these are water clear LEDs and uh, they don't do the colour mixing amazingly well. Um, and especially with the, with the bottom of the snowman, uh, such a distance away you probably end up with three quite distinct um, spots, you know, the red, green and blue. So by chopping off the top of the LED, it should diffuse it a lot better. Okay, so you can see I've just chopped off the top of the LEDs with the diamond blade on the Dremel and there's a small groove in it as well. And what I've found in the past is this gives a really good dispersion of light, um, you know, in this, this area here. So what we can do now is uh, plug these into the lamp holders. Uh, we won't be able to plug it into the mains, but we should be able to plug it into the DC power supply. I'm expecting that these will probably light around 3 volts and with um, 20 of them that's 60 volts so with the uh, normal dual channel power supply we should be able to uh, run the two outputs in series to give us about 60 volts so uh, I'll do that now and just check that they all work. Okay so the LEDs are in the lamp holder so I just grabbed the leads for the power supply make sure it's turned off yep and then we'll just make sure we get these the right way around I don't know if these LEDs will survive reverse polarity, so yeah, that's the right way around. Um, the power supply is set to series, and the current limit's on, so let's turn it on and see what happens. Oh yeah, there we go. Uh, so that's 60 volts at about 5 milliamps. Uh, let's turn down the lab lights a little bit. Yeah, and there we go. So they all look like they're working. Uh, they've each just got a little chip inside of them uh, that drives the LEDs directly. So over a few minutes, they'll all sort of go out of sync and then they'll all be different colors. But uh, yeah, that seems like it's working properly. Where's the end one? So it's a relatively diffused light output. There's a little dead bit in the middle. Um, I'm not sure if that picked it up on the camera. Um, 
and then in the snowman that just makes the whole thing glow. So hopefully they'll be just very slightly brighter once they're um, driven with a little bit more current. This is the maximum voltage that the um, power supply can supply. So uh, what we'll do now is we'll put these aside and then we'll try and work out what we need to do in terms of uh, making an LED driver um, so we can plug this into a standard uh, 240 volt outlet. Right, so next we need to design an LED driver so that we can plug these into the mains. Um, so what we've got is 20 LEDs um, and each has a forward voltage somewhere in the region of 3.4 volts. Um, so 20 times 3.4 volts because they're all in series is about 68 volts. Um, and I think what we'll do is just design a simple capacitive dropper uh, rather than anything else more fancy. Um, so we will have our incoming main supply, which is nominally somewhere in the region of 240 volt AC uh, in the UK at 50 hertz. Um, and sort of the arrangement that we'll probably go with is something um, like this, where we have the current limiting capacitor uh, with a discharge resistor um, into a bridge rectifier. Uh, probably some sort of inrush current limiting uh, just as the capacitor uh, stabilizes and then on this side um, we'll just have our uh, decoupling capacitor just to smooth out the AC uh, rectified AC slightly into our string of LEDs. Um, so we know at this point we're going to be roughly in the region of um, 68 volts DC and here we've got 240 volts AC um, and at the point where we um, go through the bridge rectifier uh, once it's rectified the sine wave and been smoothed out somewhat by the capacitor uh, the voltage here will be the 240 volts um, multiplied by about uh, 1.4 on 4 or pi by 2 um, so at this point the voltage is, uh, let's have a look somewhere in the region of 340 volts approximately. Um, so we know we want to drive these LEDs somewhere in the region of uh, around 15 milliamps. Uh, they probably tolerate uh, 20 milliamps, but um, actually the forward voltage changes depending on uh, what color uh, they are currently uh, lit up at. So uh, we want to give a little bit of margin, so we'll just say uh, 15 milliamps instead of the 20 milliamps, which I think these are rated for. So uh, what we want to do is create a current limiting circuit using um, the AC properties of this capacitor here. So we know that the impedance of this capacitor is equal to 1 over 2 pi Fc. Um, so as the frequency goes up, uh, the impedance changes. Uh, obviously at DC, which is zero, um, you don't normally get any current flowing through the capacitor once it's fully charged. Uh, and then as the frequency increases, um, the impedance goes down. So we can rearrange that to uh, give us C, which is 1 over 2 pi F X C, so we just substitute these ones around. Um, and we know that we've got uh, 340 volts uh, input and our LED is going to drop somewhere in the region of 68 volts, so our capacitor roughly needs to drop 340 minus 68 Oops. which is about 272 volts and then what we can do is um, just plug the numbers into the equation so we know that this is 50 hertz in the UK uh, 2 pi obviously fixed and for the impedance of the capacitor what we want to do um, is calculate the, the impedance that we need to, to get 15 milliamps through at uh, 272 volts. So that gives us uh, approximately 18 kilo ohms. And then if we plug that into this equation here, so that is now 18 kilo ohms. We do C is 2 pi times 50 times 18 kilo ohms, which is uh, 
uh, approximately 176 nanofarads. So I'll have a look in my um, capacitor collection uh, and see what we've got in that region. Right, so just looking through my capacitor collection, uh, there's a couple of options. Unfortunately, neither of them is 180 nanofarads. Um, but I have got a pair of 100 nanofarad capacitors which we could wire in parallel uh, or I've got these two 390 farad capacitors which you can wire in series uh, so I think we'll probably go with these two they've got a 300 volt rating each so um, uh, if we wire them in series there, there'll definitely be uh, plenty of margin and then we've got a pair of 470k uh, resistors to discharge these and if we wire um, these so that uh, one's across each capacitor it'll sort of balance the voltage between these capacitors as well. And then um, we've got a 10 ohm resistor which we can use for inrush limiting. Um, and then for the bridge rectifier we could go with uh, discrete diodes. So I've got some 1N4007s or um, I've got this in my parts bin which looks like it's rated for 600 volts. Um, it's a little bit overkill, 6 amps rating, uh, but it might be uh, a little bit neater um, because I'm not going to make a PCB or solder these onto strip board or anything. I think we're just going to do sort of point-to-point -point wiring and then fit this in a little project box and fill it with epoxy or uh, with some potting co compound, whatever I can find. Um, so I'll go and see what little box I've got that I can put these in uh, and then we can start soldering things up. Right, so after rummaging around, uh, the only boxes I can find actually are these ones which are quite a bit smaller than I was uh, hoping for. Uh, so we're really going to be pushed for space. Um, in my rummaging around I did find these two uh, Weimar capacitors, so these have a, a smaller footprint, so I've just super glued these two together, just hold them together. But it looks like we'll be able to squeeze uh, those two uh, on top of each other there. Uh, possibly the bridge rectifier will squeeze on top. Um, there's a slight protrusion on this bridge rectifier, I uh, might just try bending the legs now and seeing if it will fit with the lid on. Not sure if it will press home all the way. It's, well, that's not too bad actually. With the screws in that's not going anywhere. Okay, so that's not too bad. Um, so probably what we'll do is we'll bring in the mains cable on this side um, and the um, the wires out to the uh, very light string on this side. Um, for the capacitor on, on the um, lower voltage side that's DC, the only thing that I can really find that I've got of a decent voltage racing is another uh, polypropylene uh, Weimar capacitor. Uh, for some reason I can't find um, some of my electrolytics that I've used before for repairing TVs and stuff, so uh, this will have to do. Uh, we might need to test this first just to make sure that um, we get enough smoothing that the LEDs don't just reset and stay on their their default colour uh, on every um, you know every cycle of the AC waveform. Hopefully, we'll be able to get it just above zero volts. So we'll have to try that. Otherwise, um, we may have to go for a couple of electrolytics in series or something like that. So um, we'll start by wiring these up. Uh, firstly, with the discharge resistors over the capacitor, um, and then the um, We'll wire this up to the bridge rectifier once these are done. I've always used super glue uh, just on its own, but when I was working on the house. Uh, replacing all of the uh, UPVC um, soffits and fascias. Um, I came across this stuff. Um, so these are sold as a pair and you sort of spray the activator spray onto one side and a bit of super glue on the other and the moment you press them together probably within about five or ten seconds you've got an instant bond uh, and it doesn't come apart after that so um, yeah that saves all the issue with super glue taking forever to dry and then uh, sometimes not stick into certain materials so uh, yeah that's pretty good stuff it seems to um, you don't need much of the spray so this this lasts forever uh, really
Okay, so uh, what I've just done here is added in a couple of resistors here as well. Um, just to limit the current slightly, we've got two 100 nanofarad capacitors just here, um, which fits in quite nicely in the casework, uh, and then a pair of 510 ohm resistors. So um, a little bit of current limiting uh, just after these capacitors, and the idea is that hopefully that will limit the current enough that, um, you know, at, at this point, here you'd have rectified AC like this uh, with the capacitor and the resistor combination you sort of get an RC uh, waveform where hopefully um, it won't quite go down to zero volts which will mean that the LEDs never actually change colour but we can test that in a moment uh, what I'm just going to do now is sit this in here and run the uh, wires for the LEDs through this other hole uh, and then we can give it a test and have a look what the waveforms look like Okay, so what I've done is I've just rigged up the Variac um, to supply our power supply, which is now connected to the LEDs. Um, the meter on the left, the 179, is connected in series with the main supply, so that's measuring the current through the circuit. And then the Fluke 87 is connected across the terminals for the LEDs. So we should be able to power up the Variac. And we should be able to wind up the wick uh, and see if it starts behaving. So that's at about 100 volts mains input. Um, we've got 5 milliamps going through the LEDs. Um, and you can see the, uh, the, the voltage across the LED string is, is varying as the LEDs change colour. Um, so that appears to be working as the LEDs are changing colour and they don't seem to be uh, resetting or anything so the, the smoothing capacitors seem to be doing their job at 5 milliamps. Um, so we should be able to turn this up or we'll keep a close eye on the, the current measurement to make sure we don't go too extreme. That's 200 volts and we're at about 13.5 milliamps. And that's 240 on the incoming, uh, so 16 milliamps approximately, uh, 60 volts uh, across the LED string. So that appears to be working properly. Uh, the current's pretty much spot on what we worked out. It's very slightly higher because the uh, because of the capacitor change. Uh, we're not quite at 180 nanofarads overall, which is uh, originally what I'd calculated. Uh, but that seems to be behaving properly. So. Uh, I'm going to tidy up the box slightly, uh, probably fill it with um, as much uh, aerodite as I can to hold everything in place. Um, the, the actual wires coming out are, you can see there's a cable tie on the mains input here and there is one also on the, uh, the lower voltage LED side. Um, and I think if we put some aerodite in there to hold everything in place it should be pretty safe. Right, so I've put the lights all back together again. Um, I've filled the box with aerodite and then put the lid on. Uh, everything is secure in there and I've put a one amp fuse in the plug. Uh, these have been on about a minute now and you can see um, they're all starting to change colour at different rates now so you can see uh, you know, quite a wide range of colours there uh, and I think that they look really nice so uh, I'm going to hang these up in the lounge shortly. Um, yeah but I think they look quite good. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, uh, thanks for watching and I hope you all have a great Christmas.